there. It's time for a break in your usual programming tonight to check in as we see the gradual restrictions of lockdown ease. I want to see how you're going right now because the big questions that are facing most of us right now is where to from here? How do we navigate a future when we just have no idea how this will all turn out and given the impacts on us in so many ways during lockdown, financially, mentally, physically? What will be the ongoing effects of this period on our mental health? And what have we learned about ourselves and what are some of the challenges that we'll face from here on in? Well, as usual, I have our resident psychologist, Franco Greco with us, as well as powerhouse musician who you might've seen last weekend on the Recharge Festival lineup, did an awesome job, Dallas Frasca, and also Catherine Har Harrity, who's an artist manager and also the head of the Association of Artist Managers. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi, Miss. Great to see you all. Now, I'll start with you, Dallas. Excellent performance last week, I've got to say, as part of Recharge. What have you learnt about yourself during this period of lockdown? Yeah, um, like it has been such an amazing time for me personally. Um, I think what it has done is really pointed me back to, me, to being a musician, to playing music, to creation, it's been a really huge period of growth. I literally feel like I'm back in my bedroom when I was a teenager playing the guitar again. So I've just, I've really um, personally found it to be quite a positive experience in terms of that. You know, I think um, I have reassessed a lot of, you know, these value systems that we have in place, our, you know, the identity attached to outside when we're going out and being performers. I'm also a festival director and, you know, do wear many hats in the industry, but really coming back to um, what's really important to me, um, gardening, playing music, creation. Um, you know, it's been a really, really huge time of growth. I think having no distractions and that quiet time um, has been really awesome. I know that's not for everybody, but you know, for me, I've really embraced it. Good on you for that, because it's pretty easy to go down the anxiety path in a situation like this. Just quickly though, how much has not performing affected you? Well, you know, like I said, I've, I've gone back, I'm getting guitar lessons and piano lessons and singing lessons every week. Um, so, and look, I've been, you know, most of my life I've spent on the road. So for me being home is just like a little bit of a dream, but I will say, you know, after playing the Recharge 2020 festival on the weekend, really, really made, you know, gave me that sense of how much I miss being on stage, being amongst, you know, the magic people in the music industry, my friends, all of that, all of those kind of things. I think really the connection with people has been the, the trickiest thing. Yeah, it's tough to navigate that. And, and we all miss our friends and our family and it's nice to be able to see a couple of them face to face, I've got to say. Catherine, you work in artist management. Um, how has this whole experience impacted on you as a manager and other managers and how has it also impacted on your artists? Well, I think that, that the impact on artist managers has probably been very similar to the impact on artists. We are directly connected with our artists and obviously directly connected with every, um, every source of their income as well, which, which we derive our income from. So um, as soon as this started, this crisis started and, those shows started to fall over and they fell over very quickly. It was in the space of a, a week to 10 days um, that pretty much every single festival tour and show in Australia was gone. And we had to rethink everything. And, and there, so there were several le layers of things going on, I think, for us at that point. There was obviously what was going on for our artists um, and their mental health and obviously uh, that feeling of being out of control and um, not knowing what to expect uh, and losing all of their foreseeable performance income, of which that is the main way that artists derive their income. Um, so there was that challenge before us. And then there was obviously the challenge of our own, as artist managers, our own mental health, um, our, uh, the, the risk to our business, 
um, our businesses and also our cash flow. Um, and that feeling of being out of control again and not being able to solve the problem. Um, artist managers are so used to solving problems um, yeah. and coming up with solutions and suddenly there is no solution. There's, there's, it's outside of our control. And that feeling of having to relinquish that and allow, allow ourselves to be able to say we can't do anything. This is something we have to sit back and just wait and see how things play out. And I think that in itself, along with the income loss and, and the challenges that come with that, has been probably one of the hardest things for us. I, I, I totally understand because I felt that personally myself too. Within that first week, all my work just dried up miraculously, you know, and we and uh, I managed to work out other ways and other ways of doing things, coming up with new ideas. But personally, that's really hard when you are a type of person who likes to be able to manage your career or control the situation, or at least be aware of what the impact of certain things have. How difficult has that been for you personally? Oh, absolutely. Uh, a super challenge um, because simultaneously what was going on for us was you suddenly, you know, our way of life has completely changed within the space of two weeks where suddenly we're all at home, you know, we're, we're isolated, we're with our families um, every day and suddenly there's that extra element for us of having kids and having to, you know, balance that challenge um, of working full time, uh, dealing with all of these emotional, psychological and, and financial challenges while also dealing with, you know, the home front and our own relationships within that context. And that, that's been so difficult. We've had to rethink everything. Um, we've had to re, you know, re revise the way that we live. Um, and to be honest with you, there are some real, you know, glass half full moments mm. for me within that. I think there's been some incredible moments, um, but there's been some incredibly challenging moments as well. Like that, you know, that dealing with that um, serious uh, emotional outletting of your artists and also your own. Um, and also what's going on, you know, on, you know, in a broader sense within the community, you know, you really feel it. It's quite powerful. Yeah. Franco, as a psychologist, you can see even from this small sample, the, the highs and the lows that have come with this time. Um, we've got Dallas who's been able to create and enjoy that time and use it for learning and then... Catherine, who is managing artists who maybe aren't coping or haven't, not necessarily her artists, but would know of artists that maybe aren't coping so well with that prospect and her own personal anxieties that come with this. How have you seen this? Is this, is this a common experience for everyone? It's like, it's like a, a roller coaster, basically. It is, a, it is a common experience. I think I was, just, I was actually taking some notes when... Um, both Dallas and Catherine were talking because I think it, it's a, it actually reflects a general view uh, that I see both in uh, in my practice, but also generally what I when I, when I hear and, and listen to other people talk about it. Uh, so what the, what I guess what both uh, both Dallas and Catherine are talking about and you as well is um, and a lot of musicians that have been on the delivered live program as well as this there's, there's two parts going on. There's this this there's this a security need, which is sort of drives the anxiety, drives the sense of stress and distress. There's also this growth need that we have, mm. which actually is about exploration, purpose, values. And these two things happen at the same time. And I think often we focus too much on the coping, focus too much on the coping, then you focus on the anxiety and the stress. But actually, there's another part that we actually need to also acknowledge, that capacity to explore, be curious, adapt, and learn. And, um, and I think these are the things that I'm seeing, these two bits and pieces that go together, a part of humanity, part of who we are. How do we access that bit that really wants to create and learn and grow in a time like this when it's frankly for a lot of people terrifying? Look, it is, it is terrifying. And I, and I think a lot of psychologists have been talking about, or at least uh, I've been seeing in the media a lot about this flattening the mental health curve, which is likely to occur, you know, when we go back into a working environment, back to some sort of normality, there's some, some level of distress or trauma associated with what we're going through. Um, the danger sometimes with that is, is that we could focus too much on coping, then that's what we'll, that's what we'll feed, right? Um, there's a natural instinct for us to also sort of seek and explore, to be curious, 
and 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 ways of fostering that is 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 being more active. So we're seeing that some of the some of the, the data is coming out that we become less anxious as we become more acclimatized to what's happening, a little more calmer, less bored because actually we're doing different things, um, and people are a bit more optimistic and saying, okay, let's go back into doing something different. You probably hear a lot of people now talk about. Oh, gee, I, do, do I go back to some, I'll go back to work? What is that going to look like? Actually, I quite like what I'm doing now. Can I retain some of that? Mm. That shows adapt, adaptability and curiosity about how I can, how I can use what I've learned now into a, into a new life going forward. That's interesting. Dallas, I'll go back to you. What are you going to use from what you've learned in this time going forward? How are you going to navigate this next phase with the knowledge that you have of, of what you've, you've learned? Yeah, I just, I really relate to what you were saying there, Franco. I, um, I'm working, uh, for me, um, I was planning on working on a new record at this time anyway. So um, I feel, you know, grateful that that was my experience. So I will be, you know, applying all these new skills, um, you know, upskilling to when I'm making the record. Um, and, you know, I think, look, and just... I suppose with what Catherine was saying as well, I think there is a lot of uncertainty around, you know, what's going forward. I run a festival as well that's been postponed. Um, but, you know, just adapting, I think, um, and applying new skills to, you know, to my new album would be one, I suppose. Um, and then, you know, who knows what's going to come out of that. I could be, maybe I might teach some guitar. I'm, I'm not really sure. Like, until... Um, we feel more certain about how the music industry is going to come back when when restrictions lighten up around venues and we are able to go back and, you know, make money that way, then I still think, you know, we're in that adapting phase. Yeah. Um, Captain, what about you moving forward from here on in? What is it that you've learned and, and how are you going to approach things differently and, and sort of embrace that growth phase? I, I'm still sort of worrying about how I totally embrace that growth phase when there is that fear as well. How are you going to do that with your business and you personally, but also your artists? Well, I think um, I, I really relate to all, um, everything that, that both Dallas and Franco have been saying um, in that I think in this time, it's been amazing to reflect over the way that we do things the way that we um not only create for dallas but the way an artist manager strategizes the way that we um that we market the way that we relate to all of the partners that we work with um it's been great to reset i think as well and it's made a lot of us sit back and think about the way that we can do things differently maybe recreate a better reality for ourselves. Um, I think that for me, it's given me a chance, particularly with my artists, to focus in on the music that they're making and think about how I can best help them to get that music out there. And instead of being, uh, I guess, uh, affected by uh, other elements of a campaign or being um, really taken into that that live and that performance and that touring realm because that does take up a lot of energy and, and it is uh, it's quite logistically um, consuming so just to be able to think about how to get that music out there and do do it justice and and you know get as many people listening to the music as possible has been really really liberating um, and and that's been enjoyable for me um, yeah yeah, I think the one huge thing that's come out of this is that people are realising the importance of our creative artists, the stuff that they give us to get us through these times. And I hope that that's something that people will take with them through this experience because without all of this, who are we, you know? Who are we if we're, we're not expressing ideas and learning and growing and, and our artists and our musicians are the ones that propel that. And I, I'd like to see that moving forward. Is there anything else you'd like to see moving forward? Uh, the, the value, yeah. music being valued. Um, I know that we value it within our own music industry and within our own community but 
uh, I'd like to see the, the broader community value it in the way that we do um, and see it as so important culturally um, and within every facet of our our world um, and I'd like to see that honoured in the way that it should be. Mm. Um, Franco, Catherine came up with an interesting term there that I, I really liked and, and it's something I want to think about more as I move forward personally, recreating a better reality or creating a better reality for ourselves mm. in the future. How do we do that? How do we do that within our, our own lives? Mm. Well, you know, um, I think sometimes people talk about, you know, special projects that people can do, right? And so, and then so often people talk about it in terms of goals. Um, but I think what Catherine sort of alluded to in Dallas as well is this this this, this sense of like re reshaping who you are and what's important. And I think, um, and and connecting that to actually, uh, I really like what Catherine said about the value associated with the, the music industry and, and, and saying, well, actually that's, that's a new mission, isn't it? It's a new way of thinking about it. And, uh, and, and now you've got a new, um, uh, a, more, a, a greater objective, or at least a, a sense of this is what I want to try to achieve. And I think we're always being goal oriented as people. And, and I think having the sense of, well, this is what I want to try to achieve. This is where I want to position myself or the position in the industry or position my clients, for example, in different sorts of ways. Um, gives us a sense of um, okay, what, what are what are the how can we bring that to fruition, and that gives us a sense of purpose and connects us to a sense of purpose. Sense of purpose is is a good one to to finish on. Um, moving forward, what do you want to see, Dallas? I'll start with you. What do you want to see for yourself and for the music business in which you reside? Well, I'm definitely joining Kath's army on seeing more value placed on the value that, you know, music brings to people's lives. I think, like you said, it has, I mean, it's gotten me through it. I've been so inspired by so many other artists. I, I would like to see, um, you know, maybe as we move forward, some better platforms on how to, you know, people paying for all of all of our wonderful artists that have given us so much through these times, but 100% more value placed on our industry and what we have given to people through this crazy time. <laughs> and Catherine, what about you? I think I, I'd like a, a, the, the, the utopian future which is um, a, a evenly, an even distribution of wealth. Um, I'd love to see a, a, a diversifying of income streams for artists so that there isn't such a heavy reliance on one particular stream of income for their, for their livelihoods and their survival. And, and that goes for artists and managers as well. Um, and obviously back to, you know, Dallas and, and, what I mentioned before with val the value, valuing um, what our artists create and um, celebrating it. Celebrating creativity in general, I think, is, is something we probably need to do culturally. And that's a big shift that I feel like is, is happening, given the possibility of it all being sort of taken away, essentially. It, it, it instills fear in most people that the stuff that we love and the stuff that makes us feel like we're alive is is not going to be as accessible like just the simple thing of performance dallas you know being able to see a performance is it fills your heart doesn't it it sure does i'm with you yeah um franco moving forward uh what advice do you give people as we sort of try and navigate this little period of still in lockdown but not quite seeing people but not many what do we do well um i guess from a mental health perspective is recognizing that um uh, take with you and reflect on what you've done and and learned for the experience of what Dallas and Catherine said and say how can I apply going forward and uh, don't lose the, what you've learned you know and uh, and practice it learn, you know adapt it uh, go out there and start doing it um, so that's probably one thing is it's really reflect and into practice and adapt it I think the other part also is to recognize that there will be times when you actually will be feeling anxious about things and you will be feeling uh, fearful of what this might look like um, uh, and think about the last three, you know, two or three months and say, well, okay, what have I learned and how can I uh, leverage off what I, I used during that time to better cope 
but also recognize that you, you you always will have this coping and growth going on at the same time yeah well as always everyone it's a fascinating discussion and it's great to check in and see how you're all going and faring during what is one of the most bizarre periods we'll probably live through hopefully hopefully it doesn't get more bizarre fingers crossed um dallas when's the record coming out and <laughs> well um when it's finished um and you know i feel grateful that i've got the time to make the record that i want um i might have a sneaky release coming out very very soon with some of the collaborations i've been doing so stay tuned for that one fabulous stuff uh dallas catherine franco thank you again so much for your time it's been brilliant thanks a lot thanks mir thanks, thanks mir thank you Bye.